Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Our channel. We're a community. This is the Mayhem community. Chaos. Recently I did a big clean out and I got rid of a lot of old sketchbooks and drawings and things like that. I took photos, put them in a Dropbox folder, but I just didn't need all that clutter and hoarding in my room. And I kept the drawings that I really liked or meant something to me and I came across these ones that I did in 2016 and I really really like them and I remember really really liking them when I did them so I decided I wanted to do a redraw and some people have asked for a redraw video so here you go um, I asked you guys on Instagram which you wanted me to redraw and you guys chose the earmuffs girl so let's do that right now let's get into it I did some doodling on my lunch break, uh, the day that I saw that the earmuffs girl had won the poll, to sort of feel out some idea of how she was going to look in my uh, newer, maybe slightly improved art style. Um, and I was originally going to sort of do her as a kind of neutral pose expression, things like that because that's what the original drawing was, but then I thought about maybe pushing it a little bit further, trying to incorporate some of the things that I've learned when it comes to posing, uh, line of action, um, expressions, things like that. Um, and you will see that in the finished result, obviously. I did a couple of thumbnails in my sketchbook to try and get an idea of uh, what kind of gesture I wanted her to be doing. and. This part was a little bit tedious because I sat down to do a proper sketch and then I realized I was going to have to do some more thumbnailing, but I think that thumbnailing is probably a really important part of the artistic process just because it helps get your idea out onto paper and then adjust as you please rather than obviously waste time on a sketch that just looks really bad, which none of us enjoy doing, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, mostly just doodling my life away. <laughs> so then was on to the sketch, and if you'll notice, I'm doing a little bit of a different recording style where I just sort of jump cut. Uh, I am curious to see if you guys prefer this to speed paints. I've been doing this in a couple of my other videos, and I don't usually record the sketching process because I feel like it's just a lot of going over the same lines. As you can see, the lighting changed here because it was nighttime by the time I was like doing darker lines for the sketch, and um, I needed to use my lamp to have any kind of light. Um, yeah, I actually, I don't know, I really enjoy the sketching process, but I also just like to take my time and, you know, get a feel for what I'm doing, what I'm creating. Uh, I don't know, it's just a bit of fun, and I try not to be too strict with it. I can be strict with my line art when I need to be, but, you know, the sketch, it can be doodly. So then it was on to line art, and I transferred the sketch using that old graphite on the back of paper method, which I'll do a video on if you guys uh, would like that, but it's, it's pretty common technique I believe you can probably find a lot more videos on YouTube about it um, yeah so I was using my Fabriano watercolor paper postcards that I got postcards is that what they're called oh my gosh do you ever have one of those moments where you just yep don't know what something's called no they're definitely called postcards right right yeah anyway I started inking on one of my Fabriano watercolor postcards, gone with that, and I was using my Tombow brush pen in the hard nib, just because I have been experimenting with going back to how I used to do a couple of techniques and things like that, so if you have been following my Instagram you'll notice that for one I've been a little inconsistent with my posting schedule, but for two, I also have been a little bit inconsistent with my art style. Um, I don't know why this is, I think it may be because I have uh, ceased to going to life drawing classes, 
which I was doing for a while there, and they were keeping me well practiced. Also, when I got my wisdom teeth out, I took a big break from drawing <laughs> that lasted for about a week. Um, and what little drawing I did do was uh, digital. So, yeah, just feeling like I'm having a little bit of a style crisis, but I don't know, I really want to return to watercolors because I feel like out of all the traditional mediums, they are probably my favorite, and they're the one that I've stuck with the most over the years. Um, yeah, I really like watching people ink online. Some of my favorites are probably Jellybee and Greywick, in case you guys, I'm sure you've heard of them. If you've found my channel, I'm sure that you've found the bigger art YouTubers. Um, and they just, they just have such a calm sort of way of inking, and that's sort of what I really try and emulate. Uh, I use a little bit of line thickness, but honestly, I, I prefer to not use too much line variation. Um, I use brush pens because they're a nice thick nib, and, uh, I can't get a, a fine liner this thick, or I probably can, but... It's easier to get it in a brush pen. The only thing I don't like about the zebra... Zebra? Tombow? Wait, are they zebra or Tombow brush pens? Let me check. I've got my pencil case right here. Mm, yes, they are. They're Tombow brush pens. So the one thing that I don't like about them is that they... Are not refillable so they're a bit disposable. I can't believe I just paused recording a video to go and grab my pencil case. Yep, watercoloring. So I used the Holbein watercolors on this one and you guys will know that I actually haven't used Holbein watercolors in a while, not since getting my White Knights watercolor set, but as I mentioned I think in a previous video I've noticed that the uh, Holbein watercolors, after trying them out again recently, and the White Knights watercolors have some very interesting differences in their pigmentation um, because both of them are quite bright watercolors but I find that the Holbeins are brighter despite the fact that they are not necessarily single pigment. Some of them are but I don't own many of them so even the ones that I own that are not single pigment are still quite bright and they seem to mix okay so I'd still like to make that uh, comparison video that I was talking about a couple videos back. Um, yeah, okay, I should probably talk a little bit more about the piece. I wanted to go with like a, a warm color palette because I just felt like this was a very autumnal themed uh, outfit because that's essentially what the original drawing was. It was just sort of like an a cute outfit drawing and I believe I did try and do a painting of it in gouache but I think that I may have gotten frustrated at it and thrown it away and I haven't done that with a lot of my artworks so that, that's how you know I was really frustrated um, but I believe that the color scheme then was like a bright pink and a bright green and uh, since then I've learned a little something about color theory <laughs> and I know that two highly saturated colors together doesn't usually end well. Um, not with my art at least. I think that some people can make it look incredible, but I it just doesn't work out for me. So I mostly used yellow ochre, vermilion hue, burnt sienna, burnt umbers. I just thought it might be nice to have kind of a super warm toned piece. Um, and as you can see, I did a flat wash of, well, flat wash it doesn't look very flat I'm a little out of practice with um, my watercolors I did a flat wash of a very light brown just to start off with just to do a base color with because if you'll remember I used to do a lot of glazing with um, a sheer black black <laughs> a sheer brown color a very watered down brown watercolor um, over the top of the finished piece and that would sort of stuff around with the line art and it would make all the colors look really muddy so I thought I would try layering colors on top of it this time to see if the glazing technique helped um, 
yeah, it's it's sort of all just experimentation, really, to see what works and what doesn't. And I think watercolor is the one medium that I have experimented the most with and just sort of worked out what does and doesn't work for me. Um, I was watching Emily Artful's video on 25, I believe it was 25, 25 new uh, art hacks and tips for you. And she was mentioning about how she soaks up uh, excess water with the tip of her watercolor brush and I think I hadn't heard that tip before and I hadn't really been aware that I was doing it or that it was a hack. I think I just sort of picked it up after a little while and I realized I've been doing watercolor for many years now so yeah I was just sort of surprised that I did something that was considered new and somewhat advanced I think she mentioned. Um, yeah, okay, so that's the finished piece. I actually really enjoyed redrawing this. If you guys would like me to do more redraws, let me know. Um, what do you think? Do you prefer this piece or do you prefer the previous artwork? And if you do prefer the previous one, that's perfectly fine. I understand. I think that they both have their own sort of aesthetic to them. Check it out. It's the first uh, follower shout out art thing. I don't know. Uh, if you guys remember, I transferred Mayhem Doodle to become not a monthly challenge, but a hashtag that you guys can use in order for your art to be featured at the end of my videos. And I've had four submissions since then. That's really exciting, and I'm so happy that I get to show off you guys' art. So check out this one by Guardian Spirits 13. It's a beautiful watercolor, almost Studio Ghibli-esque kind of vibe going on. I love it and I love the little succulents in the background. Let's just like, mm, very aesthetic. Um, then we have this one from Golden Eyed Grey Cat, who is super uh, active in the hashtag Mayhem Doodle um, hashtag, I guess. Um, so you should totally check them out. Oh my gosh, look at how cute this little like girl with her dungarees is. Is it dungarees or overalls? I don't know, is there a difference? Is it a, like a language thing? I don't know. And I love her little cute clip in her hair. We also have this one by Rima Shal. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I love the wings on this one. I, I can't draw wings for the life of me. You do a really good job at drawing wings. Please draw more wings. <laughs> And um, then we've got this one by Utah underscore Jazzy Art. Uh, I, I hope I said that one right too. But just like, look at this. Like, this is, wow. I, I don't, mm, there's something so aesthetically pleasing about just a black and white sketch. And it's so, it's so simple, but it conveys so much emotion at the same time. I feel like I sound like that really ditzy art teacher, but like, look at it. It looks so good. You guys are so good. I'm so... Thank you so much for sharing your art with me and for letting me showcase it on my channel. I think that you guys should all go and follow these people. Go check them out, please. Um, and if you would like to get involved in hashtag Mayhem Doodle, just put hashtag Mayhem Doodle in your Instagram post. That's all you have to do. It's pretty simple. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I believe I always link it down in the description box. Um, you can also do other stuff like subscribe, comment, like, I don't know. I, I really am not good at this whole self-promotion thing, but I don't know. Maybe I should start trying it again. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you, I, I don't know. I hope that you have a great day. That's what I hope. Or a great night. Have a great life, pretty much. And I will hopefully see you in a week with a new video. Goodbye.